Chained rows versus migrated rows. Let's talk about what they are and what the difference is and whether they're, whether, whether they're a drama. A lot of people say, oh, I've got chained rows. What do I do? What do I do? Most people will have a database out there with an 8K block size. It's the default. Yes, you can have 4, 2K, 16K, even 32K on some platforms, but the vast majority of us, I would all have an 8K block size. That poses an interesting question. What if I have a table called my table and it's got six columns and each of those columns are, well, Varchar to 4,000. I might not put 4,000 characters into every single one of those columns, but let's say I did. Let's say column one had a couple of thousand bytes, column two had 3,000 bytes, column three had two and a half thousand bytes, etc. So if simple mathematics tells me that as all those columns get pretty full, I'm not going to be able to fit a row from that table into one block. It's just not going to fit. How are we going to solve it? And this is how we do it. When we look at an 8K block, Every block in the database has a little bit of it reserved. And that's for things like the block directory itself. It has information about the state of the block, the list the transactions that are interested in the block, uh, what we call the row directory, where the rows are. So there's a bit of overhead that has to go into every block. It's somewhere in the vicinity of about 150 bytes or so. So an 8K block being 8192 bytes, we can roughly assume there's about 8K floating around there for us to actually use, depending on the, the kind of block. But we're talking a very simple, just a, a heap block. Row number one, column number one goes into the block. And normally we would store an entire row in the block if possible. But if column one's 2,000 bytes, column t- sorry, if column one is 2,000 bytes, column two is 3,000 bytes, and column three is 4,000 bytes, well, that's seven kilobytes already burned up out of my 8K block. If column four in row number one still is bigger than say a couple of thousand bytes, there's no way it's gonna fit. We simply can't get it into one block. It's the laws of physics. So the way we do it is we put an entry, some some metadata into the block saying, well, row one started here, but he continues on. And we'll find another block into which to put the rest of the row. So column four, column five, and column six, and there's our entire row. This is what's called row chaining. A single row, row one, simply would not fit in a single block. So we had to chain multiple blocks together to actually hold the data. That's row chaining. One row spanning multiple blocks. Key point here is, when we, before we talk about migrated rows, is part of the, the first few columns are in the first block and the remaining columns are in the second block. And this obviously could continue on further and further. One thing worthy of note is no matter how small the columns are. Once you go above 255 columns in a block, I know back in Oracle 8 and below, we could only have 255 columns in a block. And then we changed it, we lifted that restriction to be a thousand columns. Even though that restriction has been lifted, the actual information that we can store on a block is capped at 255 columns. So if you have 256 columns, we'll actually start storing them in, in this similar way. We'll chain the 256 column, even if there was space in the first block, into subsequent blocks. So let's talk about, now it's a chain, let's talk about migrated rows. That's a slightly different concept. Put aside the table you just saw, which had massive columns with massive sizes. Let's talk about a normal column, a normal table, which probably has rows with maybe 10 or 20 columns. And those columns might be numbers and dates. They're generally fairly small. There might be some small information. So the first row easily fits in the block as does row two, as does row three. Most of the time in our database, the most typical, we, we can fit lots of rows in a single block. Row number eight there, it's employee number number eight, and his employee name is John. And in this case, we've got 13 rows in this single block. At this point, we don't put any more rows in here, even though there's some space, because you'll be familiar probably with the percent free setting. When I say percent free 10, what we're really saying is, when there is 10, less than 10% of free space left in the block, we'll mark that block full and we'll move on to the next block for subsequent inserts. Now, the reason we do that is to handle the issue we're about to show, which is let's take that row number eight there, employee eight, a name equals John, and let's run an update statement. I'm gonna update the employee table. The guy's phoned up, he said, look, everyone calls me John on the floor, but my real name is Jonathan. And so I'd like to be known by Jonathan, please. So I'm going to do that update. That's a bit of a drama because as you can see from the graphic, and this actually happens inside a block as well, the rows are stored pretty much end on end. They're flush up against each other. I can't simply overwrite row number eight where it sits in that block because I simply can't fit it in there. There's only three bytes for John and I need to stuff now, what do we got, Jonathan? Another eight bytes, uh, another, another five bytes in there to bring the total to eight. I can't do it. 
that's where percent free comes in. I will utilize some of that percent free space to actually relocate that row into the percent free space there. The bit of data where the row originally sat now becomes free for other operations. So I consume a little bit of my percent free to actually allow these updates for rows which grow. What happens though now, if after some time, or when I created the table, I set percent free say to one or zero, that the actual block is absolutely jammed full. Even though I maybe started with some percent free, some rows have grown over time and they've used up that space, or I started with percent free zero and all the rows now fitted in that block and there's literally no space left. What happens now when I do this update? Well, I got a problem. Obviously, we just don't disallow it. That would be not very functional of us as a database vendor. What we do is we do something simple. It's similar to the chaining concept. What we do is we simply go and get that problem row and we put a little forwarding address there. We say, look, we've moved because I couldn't fit you in here and we've moved you to another block. And I, in this case, I started a new block, but it could be another block that simply got some free space in it that already has other rows. But as you can see, we've sort of left a forwarding address. The subtle difference here is, notice that I didn't move just the column. I actually moved the entire row to a new block. This is unlike the chaining concept where columns sort of sit across blocks. In this case, the entire row got relocated to a new block and I left a forwarding address. The last one there is migrated rows and we've just covered chained rows before. Now the obvious question is, should you be worried about this? It just goes on, it happens, we do it automatically. You know, it's not like, uh, you have to do anything to take advantage or, or worry about it happening. Is it a concern? And most people are concerned about performance. Let's look at the first schematic of a chain rows. I've got column one, two, three in the first block and column four, five, six in the second block. The key thing to remember here is when we index rows in an Oracle database, the index points to the block or the row ID, which then therefore points to the block on disk for where that row starts. So an index entry for that particular row there you can see on screen will point to the first block on the left. There is no reference in the index that points to the second block. We have to follow that, that sort of forwarding address where it says there's more here. So let's talk about whether it's going to be a drama. What if I run a query like this? Select column two from my table where the primary key equals some uh, value. So I'm gonna do an index lookup. There's no drama with that. Column two is in the first block. There's no extra work there. I simply go to that first block via the index row ID and voila, column two's value is there, I'm good to go. There is no issue with that chained row in that particular circumstance. Let's look at this one. Select maximum column five from my table. How about that? Is that a drama? That's not gonna be a drama either. Why? I'm not doing any index reads. So what the database will do is it's, it knows it's going to scan every single block from the low, what we call the low high watermark to the high high watermark, but for the ease of discussion, it's going to scan every single block for that table looking for column five to get the maximum value. Since I'm scanning every single block anyway, there's not going to be a cost here in terms of following that moving address. When Oracle encounters a block and says, oh, there's no column five in this block, it knows that it's going to encounter that five, that column five somewhere. It might have already seen it or it might soon see it later on, but it's definitely going to encounter it in the full table scan. So that's not really going to be a drama either. How about this last one though? I'm doing a primary key lookup on column five. The index row ID is going to take me to the first block. I'm going to look along that block and it's going to say, well, there's no column five here. Then I hit this button, you know, for lack of a better term, my forwarding address, which then says, yep, to get column five, you now need to move along to the second block. So that's a doubling of cost. But the point I wanted to make here is just because you have chained rows or just because you have migrated rows isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you're doing a lot of index access, then it might be a drama. If you're doing a lot of full table scans, it's probably not gonna worry you at all. One of the key stats I'd be looking at is rather than looking at the number of chained or migrated rows you have, look at the statistic called table fetch by continued row. That's the stat that gets incremented when you have to sort of follow along this list of pointers to find the information you are after. If that's a huge percentage of the amount of actual accesses you do, then maybe you want to think about reorganizing that table to re, you know, reorganize the data to move to fix those migrated rows. But please be aware, you obviously can't fix a chained rows issue. The row simply was too big to fit in a block. You don't want to reorganize a table just because the rows are chained.
because they'll still be chained. Reorganizing the table is really going to be only of use if you're suffering from table fetch continued rows for migrated rows. Mm -hmm.